Hey guys, uh, welcome to episode 47 of Profit Talk. Um, wow. That's a lot of episodes. I said the same thing earlier. I was like, episode 47, it started February of last year? Jan January or February. I think something. January. So we haven't missed it four or five or six weeks, but... That's pretty good. And it's, well, that, and it's mostly been my fault for like when I'm sick, or when you're. And it's mostly your right. fault. Oh yeah, when I'm <laughs> when I'm out in BFE Tennessee with no internet. Right. We tried. We tried. Um, fair warning. I already told the guys if I turn off my camera and just kind of disappear for a minute, I will be back. Um, I've been sick for like nine days, and I tried eating again, so it's not feeling like it's going well already. You're so quarantined. We'll the kids haven't gotten it. They haven't caught whatever it is, so I have no idea. I don't know. Like, I don't know what's wrong. I can't, like, crackers make me sick. That sucks. So. Crackers make me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel hung like I get hungry. Really? That's no, what that's... like that does that's what it doesn't make any sense. I get hungry. So I'm just drinking lemon juice and water. That's Chinese food. You ever notice the more Chinese food you eat, like the hungrier you are and it's like you just never you just keep cramming it in. That's not how that works, Dusty. <laughs> not quite. Dusty can put away some Chinese food. Uh, yeah, I yeah. can get it. Close my door, please. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> okay, Paul, you have to tell them about your your creature. Oh, yeah, the thrift store story from today. Yeah, I, it wasn't a total loss. I found a Cuisinart bread maker for ten bucks that should sell for about a hundred, but maybe hundred thirty. But then when I was walking out, I walked past this creature from the Black Lagoon model. There was like a really detailed model in the box and everything. I was like, huh. So I turned around real quick just to look it up. And they were going, there was like some dude that was, that's been trying to sell one for the last year or so for 300 bucks. I don't know. It was just like 10 listings from the same guy for $300, all completed, didn't sell. And then there was one other one that sold for like, it was up listed for $90 or best offer, so I'm like, and it's twelve ninety nine. I can get fifty bucks for it. Turn around, it's gone. <laughs> Straight up disappeared. Like I, I was like, where'd it go? I'm looking around. I didn't see anybody walk past me. I didn't hear anybody walk past me. I, I'm like looking around the store, trying to. It was a small thrift store, trying to find the person that grabbed it. I don't know where it went. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> People are stealing Paul's stuff. I know. I was like, I was about to be getting in somebody's face. It's like, really, dude? But my bad. I probably should have just grabbed it. And do all the cuisine it. art bread makers do well? I look at anything with a stainless finish that says cuisine art. Uh, I don't. I'm not a big bread maker. So I'm, I don't think I've ever sold a bread maker, but I've sold a lot of coffee makers. But it's usually the stainless finish uh, appliances that do really well, and they got to be like Cuisinart or KitchenAid or you know some high end. If you wanna, I don't know, if you find a coffee maker to, for a dollar at a thrift store or at a garage sale or whatever, then. Yeah, you might get 20 bucks for it, but is it worth it to deal with that? Because you're going to pay $15 to ship it minimum, plus have to find a box for it and a lot of other stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it's really easy just to look up the model numbers. Just look up the model numbers, see what they're selling for. And, I mean, a lot of that Cuisinart stuff, you're talking 50 100 bucks. I know that, like, I have some friends that have to eat gluten-free, uh -huh. and... There's a certain, I think it's Breadman brand bread machines, and that one I know goes, it goes crazy because it, apparently it does the gluten-free breads, like, awesome, and so many of them don't do it right. Um, 
but I don't, I don't know, I tend to not pay attention to them because I, I don't know, I collected bread machines for a long time, like, for me, because I make our bread. I can make bread. I don't need a bread machine to do it, though. And I'll I don't like to need, I don't like to need dough. Like What's that? Hate, I hate to knead dough. I love it. I it's like a workout. It. It's like a little mini workout. I love kneading dough. That's my favorite part of making bread. Wow. Like it gets under my fingernails. I can't stand it. Oh, yeah, that doesn't even faze me. Flour, a little sugar, a little salt, and can of beer, partial can of beer, and then mix it all in a bread pan. Makes beer bread. We That's do beer bread, bread sometimes. The only bread that will that I make like by hand is Irish soda bread. Tristan didn't do that this year. I've never really been doing bread really at all. I don't even eat bread anymore. I, I have a loaf of bread in my cupboard to make my kids' lunches. That's it. Like I don't I don't use it for anything else. Sometimes I made French toast on Sunday. You know, Easter Sunday. Felt like making breakfast, but I didn't want to work hard. So <laughs> I just threw some bacon and turkey bacon and French toast on. Gavin makes French toast. I he like really good French, French toast. toast. They've been on a breakfast burrito kick. They'll make like a bunch of breakfast burritos and stick them in the freezer so they can just like nuke them every morning. I've been doing that. I've been doing uh, meal prep. My brother within like so my sister in law or wait my brother's sister is that my sister in law? That makes her my sister in law. I'm just checking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she was I mean this girl was almost three hundred pounds a year and a half ago. And she got into the CrossFit and getting into shape, you know, she's like she's a lawyer, mother of three, they've got like Huge house, hugely successful, blah, blah, blah. But she was, like, uh, getting pretty big. She starts working out, like CrossFit. And her, my brother started cooking all her meals because he's a chef. And he would sit there and prep all her meals for the entire week and have them, like, all labeled and everything in the fridge for her and all that. And uh, they were doing that for a while. And then, uh, I mean, she's got really serious about it. She's going to do a bodybuilding competition in two weeks. Like Holy she crap. Legit lost. I mean, she's down to like 170 pounds. She's looks really good, like in shape. You know, it's, whoa. But That's awesome. Uh, apparently, she was talking to all the other bodybuilders and stuff at her gym, and they're just like, oh, God, I can't take this food anymore. Horrible, blah, blah, blah. She's like, I love what my husband cooks for me, and so he uh, started cooking. He did. He started doing meals for some of the other people that were there and charging them and everything. And now I guess he's got like 20 or 30 clients, and he's renting out a kitchen. And I went over to his house a couple weeks ago and helped him, uh, like, portion out a bunch of the meals and everything just to kind of see how it works and you know, get an idea of what kind of stuff uh, they're putting in those things, and I've just been, like, my girlfriend's been wanting to get back into it, so I've been, the last couple weekends, filling the fridge up with that stuff. That's what John does. John started doing meal prep, like, for when I'm not there. On Sundays, he'll cook, like, all of his dinners and, and breakfast. Like, he got the kids making the breakfast burritos, and he has the salad in a jar, for lunch, mm -hmm. so he makes all those on Sunday, and he does has his supper for the whole week, you know, ready. And he's That's down funny. like twenty five pounds in like I don't know whenever I was there, like a month. Yeah, I mean, in the two weeks, my girlfriend's lost like six or eight pounds or something like that, and really not doing anything different, just eating the stuff that we make on Sunday. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I need to start doing that. I like the salad in a jar salad. thing. That's really cool. And he does like like he's got like a Southwest salad that's really good. And he may he'll like veganize me some for when we're there. Um, yeah. I mean I'm really good. I'm not a bad cook, but getting everything prepped and ready like I can do 
an entire week's worth of meals in two hours on a Sunday and be done. Mm-hmm. You know, and have like ten or fifteen meals ready to go in the fridge. It's great. I like it a lot. <laughs> you know, you just turn on a movie or something on my iPad and let that run while I'm cooking. Does it's like easy. But yeah, I think I'm gonna be getting be doing more of that. Just gotta get biggest problem is it gets kind of boring because you make like 10 of the same meal or five of the same meal or whatever. You make like, you know, 10 or like five pounds of chicken breast, you know, and two pounds of asparagus and two pounds of broccoli and like a big thing of rice or quinoa or whatever you want to do or, you know, sweet potatoes. And then you just got to kind of divvy it up and figure out what goes into what and portion out the carbs and the proteins and the greens and all that stuff. But. Do you want to tell them about your mirror that's going to break? I'm sorry. Uh, hmm? Do who what? He's ignoring me. I can't, I couldn't hear you. No, we started talking about eating healthy and he tuned out. He's like probably looking up cheeseburgers and uh, I was. recipes. He's looking up how to do yoga. I was talking to the audience. Lies. I said, do you want to tell them about your mirror that you bought that's going to break as soon as you try to ship it? I know. What kind? No, you have to ship stuff. I'm, I'm on the fence on that one. Um, that is a mirror that was going to be in a video until YouTube lost all my video, that half my video that I uploaded, so whatever. The whole like me haggling with the old guy with the trailer on the side of the road where he had all his grandmother's stuff. It was awesome, too. But we lost that part of the video. So it's an old... He said it was from 1955, and I said, how do you know? And he said, because I was born in 1957 in my mom's house. And I was like, oh, okay. Then you would know. But it's an old... Um, it's kind of mid-century, 1950s. It's a medicine cabinet with the glass shelves inside of it, and it's what they call a skyscraper, would be the style, because it's got those two fluorescent tubes going up the sides of it that have little chromes top and bottom on it. And it's probably 24 inches. I mean, it's pretty big. The problem is those two fluorescent tube thingies are really kind of floppy, so I'm either going to have to see if they easily disconnect and ship them separately with pictures showing the person on the other end how to put it back together again, or I'm going to have to do some very creative packaging, which involves supporting those two pieces separately from that piece, which could be done with styrofoam blocks and things like that. And then I would definitely double box it. But it's worth maybe 300 That's what I'm hoping for, because I'll probably hold out on it. I paid 30 bucks for it. So it's like Paul said, Paul goes, I don't even know, even three thirty to three hundred. I don't know if I'd mess with it. So now I was like, yeah, now I'm kind of almost thinking, throw it on Craigslist, whatever. I dragged it in here today to clean it up because it was nasty, and I just stuck it up there. But it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean the amount of work that goes into, I mean I could just I could see myself spending five hours brainstorming, not just sit, sitting there trying to carefully package everything, but just figuring out the best way to do it, taking everything apart and redoing it, taking the bulbs out and trying to find a way to do it that way, and then just like until I felt comfortable. And next right. thing you know, it's like, wow, I spent the whole day <laughs> working on packaging this stupid mirror. And then it still breaks when it gets there. <laughs> I mean, I've had the best... I'm, I've only had probably two items in the last few years break. One of them was a giant, it was like a 12-inch statue. It was like solid plaster, and it was like colored bronze. That showed up completely shattered. And then I had a griddle. It was like a panini maker, poison art, stainless steel finish. <laughs> uh, and that one showed up with the hinges completely broken. But I mean, those are that's it. So I'm pretty good at packaging stuff. I I just don't know if I'd want to mess with something like that. 
I really didn't even pay attention today when I was cleaning it up to how those those tubes were attached on the sides. So I don't know. I just it was sitting on my front porch on a table, and I was trying to kind of take a bunch of UPS packages outside and also clean up the front porch at the same time. So it was kind of a twofold. Oh, I'll take it in the house and mess with that for a while. Because I had pretty much hit a brick wall at that point. So it was like, okay, I don't feel like listing anything else. I'm getting tired. What can I do that sounds like fun? And I'm like, oh, listen to a little bit of music and clean a medicine cabinet with 50-year-old toothpaste splatters in it. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's any 50-year-old toothpaste left. You did a good job of cleaning it up. No, you should see the inside. Oh. And then I'm also kind of like, because the metal paint on it is starting to flake, and then I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I could actually, with a little steel wool on the chrome on the outside of it or some metal polish, I could actually tape it off, tape the back part off with the paint. I could refurnish it and probably get a lot more money for it. I'm like, do I really want to do that, though? I used to love refinishing furniture. But then it was like, yeah, that was more for fun, and when it's for work, it's not as much fun anymore. I love. I've got a set of AK-47 hardware, like the buttstock and hand grips and everything that I refinished a while back, and I uh, took them with me to an AK build like years ago, and everybody was just like, "Oh my God, how'd you get the finish like that? How did? What did you use? Blah blah blah." They thought it looked so cool, but I mean, I'd never done that before with AK-47 and stuff, but I love refinishing wood. When it comes to metal and plastic and, you know, chintzy stuff, I don't know. I mean, chrome, don't you have to, like, electroplate it or something to do it right, or are you thinking about just... No, I mean, really, there's nothing wrong with the chrome on it. It just needs, like, some never dull or something like that, mm -hmm. like a chrome polish to get off the, the few little spots where it's got a little bit of, like, tarnish. Or a little bit of rust that's on the exterior of the chrome. Yeah, that's that stuff. That's all. I use this all the time. This is actually what I use to clean the leads on game cartridges. Clean the what? That's the leads on video game cartridges. I'll take this, you know, like a Super Nintendo or something. It's got these two little screws on here. See those things in there where it plugs in? That gets all like rusty and crappy and gunky and just nasty. So you take these two little screws out with, when you get the special bit, take the thing off, and then you just use some Neverdoll on the leads, and it makes them brand new again. And then put everything My Neverdoll, My Neverdoll looks, looks different than yours, though. Did they change the packaging? Probably. I don't know how many years old this is. This is probably. Like yours is older. Old. Mine's in the blue. Mine's in the blue. I bought this. I mean, I, the only reason I got this is because when I was in the army, they used to make us Neverdoll all the chrome in the bathrooms. And <laughs> everything had to look brand new every day <laughs> for inspections and all that. So I that's where I learned about Neverdoll. And if it's metal, if it's shiny, put some Neverdoll on that and then wipe it off and it'll look good. Unless it's a CD. Don't try using Neverdoll on a CD. That does not work. <laughs> no. It'll play like new. <laughs> hey, guys, if you're enjoying the show tonight and all the talk about reselling and Brad, hit the thumbs up to counteract the four thumbs down. We always we start every show with three thumbs downs. <laughs> like every show before it starts us. has three thumbs downs. We have three people that hate us with a passion. Right. That's okay. Like Adam Potter said earlier in the, in the chat, he's like, you know what? They're so dedicated. I want to hire them as employees. It is definitely not the three of us put like deciding to hit the dislike button before anything else starts to get sympathy <laughs> likes from you guys. That is not what's happening. <laughs> it's it's always three before it starts. It has it's been like that for like weeks and weeks and weeks. There's always three. Hmm. Before it starts, I don't even pay attention to dislikes. I mean, even on my show, it's like, oh, whatever. I mean, I don't look at the likes or the. The only reason I look at the likes at all, I add them up, because dislikes <laughs> give you, like, the same kind of bump on YouTube as likes. Mhm. Mm uh, I think. I mean, I'm sure that if you have like 60 dislikes and two likes, then they 
that probably doesn't help you very much. But I mean, as long as you're in the green, then it should be all right. I don't know if it even matters if you do go in the, you know, like if you do have more dislikes. Because, like, if you search something, then, you know, some of the some of the top videos will have, it'll be like a crap ton of dislikes, and then, you know, you've got like 12 likes. I think it all counts as the same engagement. Huh. Yeah. I don't know that it matters. I don't know. Period. Yeah. Yeah. They're just angry Trump voters, that's all. That's all right. I only have, like, one true hater that I know of. But that doesn't bother me. <laughs> you earned that one. Well, I totally no, earned that one. He deserved it, and then you just earned it after he deserved it. <laughs> okay. So? I might have another hater because of something I said, but I don't, I don't care about that one either. I... I know I have haters, I just don't know, or care who they are. So, oh, that's nice. Paul, you got your uh, Christmas tree out there. That's awesome. You like my Charlie Brown Christmas tree? That, yeah, I you do. know it's like March, right? <laughs> it's my Charlie Brown Christmas tree. He's preparing. No, actually, this is a $300 night or uh, end table. This is the Christmas tree. But we just put it right on top because it makes it in the camera look like a full Christmas tree. <laughs> in March. Uh, my kitchen table is in the living room. Oh. Yeah, we reorganized and uh, kind of redecorated, and I wanted more space in here to work. And the table is kind of getting in the way. And so, so now table. you have a small decorative table with a Christmas tree on it that doesn't get in the way, right? It doesn't. That's actually right. Like instead of reaching up here and reaching across, it's all right here. <laughs> and I can actually use my table in the living room and watch TV. Boom. Boom. I ran some sales again today. I forgot. I had all my sales in my store set to go off on a Sunday night. And I would forget to put start them back on Sunday night and run them again. So I started having them go off on Mondays because Monday is really my biggest. Monday, honestly, is probably my biggest online selling day on both platforms. Um, so I redid all my sales and stuff this morning when they went off. And then some sales started coming in after that. Mine tends to be Sunday. It's, you know, I mean, I could go back and look at the graph, but the last time I checked it, it was like Monday, March 14th. Well, that, oh, that was a bad, that doesn't count. Um, although last week it was Saturday. And then the week before that it was... I can't really look at those graphs because, you know, I could have one $300 sale and then... Yeah. I can have the next day where I have ten sales at, you know, ten or fifteen bucks a piece, and it ends up coming in underneath that. But, you know, it's true. All over the place. All over, but. My Amazon yeah. is getting woefully empty again. Woefully. Woefully. Yeah, my Amazon's pretty empty too. I keep like I'll go to a thrift store or a pawn shop. And I'll just buy it, a stack of games, bring them home, list them right away. I'll wake up the next morning, and all the popular ones that I knew were going to sell right away, sell right away. And then the other ones just sit there. And then they just slowly, like, two or three a day sell when I don't list. But on days where I list on Amazon, I'll have, like, one or two days in a row where, you know, I'll, I'll sell, like, 10 or 15 items. And then... It'll go back to the normal, you know, two, three, five a day. So here's something that's very exciting. It's not eBay related, so we don't put Danica to sleep because she loves eBay. I've been doing eBay. From the bathroom? What have you been saying? No. Well, I had to re I re Relisted a couple things. That's about it. I relisted. That doesn't count. No, but I mean, I've been actually putting stuff on there. But no, not while I was sick. 
So today I went through, there was a stack of DVDs on that table that's been sitting there somewhere right there. I'm getting pretty good at this backward, backward pointing thing. There was a stack of DVDs that were left over that all got kicked back by the whole, oh my God, the sky is falling, Amazon is, warehouses are full, and, and yada, 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 and oh mm -hmm. no, it's just a glitch, it's going to go away, whatever. So I had been kind of hitting them, and everybody said, oh, it's going to end on the 23rd, so I tried on the 24th, and it was like, no, that didn't change anything. I tried today, and every single one of them went out. Nice. Hmm. How so many were there? Whatever that was, they've emptied the warehouses. Do what? How many were there? Um, it's hard to say because the more I went back through that stack, I was like, why the crap did I want to send that in in the first place? And a whole bunch of them went into the porch, the donate pile. There was like six, I think. Oh. I had like 50. I had had three initially, and then I started going through some more, and there were three more that got kicked back. So there was about six, probably. So, And all six of them went through. So you guys know that I've been interested in the whole merch thing. Um, there are now some people, it appears to be mainly China, that are... Stealing no. people's shirts and like listing on them as a seller, like in the Amazon uh, catalog, mm -hmm. they're listed as a seller. They're taking people's brands, registered Amazon brands, registered at Amazon brands, saying that that's their brand and listing on the listing and selling printing shirts in China. They say they'll ship in like 25 to 30 days. Um, but they're taking their brand, they're taking their shirts, they're, like their complete They're doing on the same, the on the same ASIN or they're doing a different ASIN? Yeah. No, they're doing, the, it's the whole thing. They're doing the whole listing. One guy had like 300 um, found, like he had like a cup of, I think like five or six designs and found 300 listings because they were doing like one for each size and color. So like you had Okay, so they're taking blue. a merch like if you design something on merch, there's people in they're got people in China stealing your t-shirt off they're of They're stealing the listing. They're printing it themselves and shipping it from China. Well, they're saying that they're gonna make it and ship it. Like... And the shipping's only like four ninety nine or something like that, and they're way undercutting on prices for the shirts. Oh, so they're actually drop shipping from merch. No, not if they're undercutting no. the prices, they couldn't. No, they're not drop shipping from merch because they're saying they are shipping from China. Oh, okay. So they're, I guess, doing like cheap crap printing over there, but they're taking the person's brand of the shirt and they're taking their complete design, their complete listing, like keywords, bullet points, and everything. And then they're creating a separate listing for each like child blue, child red, women's brown, whatever, you know? And it's, there's been quite a few people that are coming, you know, that are saying, holy crap, just checked my stuff. They've got mine too. But there's ones in, most of them seem to be in China. There were a couple from Japan. Like, that say they're shipping from Japan. I mean, the easiest thing to do, but you can't really probably... Do, the easiest thing to do would be to request an ASIN merge, but because one is merch, which is essentially print-on-demand, you probably couldn't merge a non-merch with a merch, could you? That's the problem. This yeah, well, and, the like, the person doesn't even have the buy box. Like, that was what was weird. The other person was showing up, too. Hold on. Put it back up. I want to make this shirt. They have that shirt. I know, but is it trademarked? You can't trademark know. that. It's T-Rex. You can't trademark no. T-Rex. I love that, where he's got the little... I know, he's got the little claw thing, and he's like, I am unstoppable! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I went to... Or I was driving past a bar the other day, and they had a chalkboard, and they had the T-Rex, the and a giant-ass margarita, <laughs> and it's like, 
Margarita's so big, even T-Rex can hold them. <laughs> oh. Cannot be trademarked, right? T-Rex can't be trademarked. T-Rex can't be trademarked, no. No. But so there's, I mean, so many people are copying, I mean, people are going to copy stuff. You know, that's fine, that's what happens. But at least they change something, change a font, change something. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, like, copy this and put it on a shirt. Well, I mean, yeah. as, long as, as long as they keep allowing people to sell from China with these god-awful times, as long as they keep allowing them access to the feeds to upload listings and steal other people, you know, spiders that go out and get all these listings, mm -hmm. that have programs that do it automatically, as long as they leave access to all that, it's going to continue to happen because the programmers are just going to stay on top of the game and keep figuring out how to do it automated. Well, if you if you go on Amazon, like, especially now, like now that merch is kicking off, it's, it's you know, people are, are using it, they're designing shirts and stuff. Um, if you go and look at the t-shirts, just t-shirts on Amazon, you will find so many, and most of them seem to be China. I'm, I'm not trying to pick on China or whatever, but that just seems to be where most of them are from. And you'll find, like, shirts, like, th they make no sense. It's like they started with, like, B, you know, and looked at nouns in the English language. And it's like, listen to me, I'm a bark. You know, listen to me, I'm a book. It's And there'll be like hundreds of these shirts. And it's like, I mean, they're not merch. They're it's just... one of those where they figured out that they hit on one that actually made sense to Americans, and then they bought a bunch of them, and then they can all jump on that one. But I don't they're know just if they're the wall until something sticks. Like I don't even know if they have the actual shirts made. Like they don't even look like they're actual shirts. Well, why would they? I mean, Amazon merch shirts aren't made. They've got thirty days to get them to you. They can mm -hmm. print them out on demand in a day. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're just like they're throwing out all these things. It's so the catalog they, is getting off. Yeah. They're just doing the same thing that Amazon Merch is doing. And if they have to sit there and lose money by printing one shirt, then they'll do it. If it means that they finally hit gold on one where they make like a thousand sales or whatever in a month. Yeah. It, well, they only make one. Because I'm sure it's a printing house. You know what I mean? Well, I would think it's a printing house. Yeah. I would assume. So you're saying they're listing on the same listing or they're copying everything and creating a separate AC? It I've heard both ways. Like I've heard ones where they're showing as a seller on someone's listing, which I don't even know how that's possible, but there you have it. And then other ones where they've created another ASIN and have completely taken everything, like from the brand all the way, you know, through everything. It's been in on the message boards, the or not the message boards, um, some of the Facebook groups, like merch, different merch groups and Amazon groups. Huh. Oh. I've been staying away from Facebook, like my life depends on it. <laughs> it's just, it's so easy to hop on Facebook and get lost. And next thing you know, two hours have just been disintegrated, basically. You've wasted two hours. Disintegrated. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been making shows the last couple weeks is because I'm just trying to, like, figure out how I can kind of do all that and... Uh, not get sidetracked in the process and then lose half my day when I'm only trying to like devote like an hour to something, you know? Oh, poor Sarah thought that, that Amazon had blocked her. The what? Did you, in the chat? 
She's like, uh, she was talking about, about yeah, because she heard where I said that they were letting you list again. Or at least it did for me on those items. And she said that she, on, couldn't figure, she couldn't figure out what was happening back when it was happening. She thought they just had her blocked. I gotcha. Um, I was kind of productive today. I shipped some eBay stuff out. I got some... I sold some stuff to two other resellers, so I got it out UP. It got it ready for UPS. Um, finished up an FBA shipment. Went grocery shopping. Brought the trash can up from the road, or was that? No, it was yesterday. Yeah. I don't know. That was major. That was a major highlights of the day. Listed five items. Went through a bunch of stuff. Clean my office up, believe it or not, which is like crap again. I'm and clean. Um, and clean the medicine cabinet. I was what? looking at. I was looking at the listing. The one I sent you. Yeah, but then I saw one down below that I thought. But see, I don't know that one I sent you. The more cowbell T-shirt is that a merch shirt? It says it's printed and shipped from the U.S. I don't think that... It specifically says that as a bullet in the listing. No, see how it's got a model wearing the shirt. It says, and I quote... Oh, so that won't be a, that won't be a merch shirt. Exclusive Crazy Dog t-shirt branded tee designed and printed in the U.S.A. Right, but, but it's, when you, there's a model wearing the shirt in the listing. Change that to large, select a size, select size large, and all of a sudden it shows up other sellers on Amazon sold by Beijing Shirts Limited ships from Japan with a just launched profile with no feedback. Oh, I don't know. If you, you have to select, yeah, you select are, the size, it shows the other listings. All of the ones that are... Um, Hijacking are just created. I don't feel like that's making a difference. I mean, you know, you might lose a sale or two to something like that, but what are you going to do about it? You're playing in Amazon's sandbox. I mean, you, they're, if, if they're going to allow it, there's nothing you can do about it. So the best thing to do is stay ahead of the crowd and just keep making more shirts. Like, if you can make a oh, couple of shirts sure. that are really good sellers and that everybody else wants to piggyback on, you can probably keep doing it. I mean, everybody that I've ever met that's been real creative like that, it's not like they just come up with something one day and then that's it, they're done. I mean, they're always thinking of new things and they're always staying ahead. And, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm not on merch because I don't think that way. I'm not creative like that at all. I'm not a smart man, Jenny. I'm not a smart man. Life is like a box of chocolates. Here you go. I've fallen down the rabbit hole. I'm pretty black and red, or black and white. Black and red, black and white, whatever. What have you done? I don't have anything. There's my lovely wifey who filled in for me last week, and I'm not brave enough to go back and watch it. It's pretty good. I mean, she laughed at all of the dick jokes, and we weren't even trying to make them. We weren't even trying to make dick jokes, yeah. No, she Somebody was... asked me if I had a bald spot. <laughs> Turn around. Let's see. No, I have a giant cowlick that I've had since I was, like, six. You guys want to see my lack of a bald spot? Yeah, I wear this because my hair is unruly, not because I'm losing it. It's wild and out of control, just like me, you know. Joe, they don't, they aren't acknowledging it, but it's happening to so many people that there's no way that it's rumor mill. Well, part of the problem, I think, is that from something I was reading a while back is that when you were clicking other offers that some of the Chinese were also figuring out how to show like ships from Texas with a really long time and disguising the fact they were from China 
or just you know leaving off the ships from China, they're going to have to. Amazon's going to have to because they're going to end up with. I mean, if their ultimate, if their ultimate goal is to get people to order Prime only, which I kind of think it is. I'm not saying they're trying to do away with third-party sellers, but I mean, you know, Amazon ultimately has control of everything. If everybody goes Prime, and goes FBA, if that's their their goal is to kind of push people that way. I mean, they're going to have to. They're going to end up with people that are ticked off, you know. And there's, I don't know how many people I've talked to that said, "Oh, I clicked this or clicked that and thought I was ordering from the U.S. and it didn't get here in time for my kid's birthday. It took three weeks because I didn't realize I ordered from a Chinese seller." I personally have never had that problem because I usually check out the estimated time. I only order stuff off FBA. Well, I want to order stuff on FBA doesn't affect me at all, but if it's not prime, I don't buy it. You know, and that's sad, but I just I don't order from third party sellers anymore. Um, I do on eBay only if it's an item I can't find on Amazon. I've had a couple items, uh, motorcycle gasket and stuff like that, but even then I'm really picky on who I order from. I look at their feedback, it needs to be dang near 100%, and they need to have quite a bit of feedback and have proven that they know how to ship stuff. You know? Yeah. There's just, I mean, call me spoiled, but I order, you know, I know what I want. I want to get it quickly. I want to pay for it, be done with it, and it shows up on my doorstep in two days. Yep. That's how my kids had Easter, because Mama was not leaving the house. So Look, the Easter Bunny looks a lot like the USPS man. It looks a lot like... You know, I'm sorry, your Easter basket looks like an Amazon box. <laughs> um, yeah, I turn up my head's between. Like, you know, you do the whole head between your knees thing. Um, that's why I turn off the camera. I figured you didn't want to see that. But I um I didn't have eggs to hide for them because we always hide eggs around the house, and I just didn't have creativity. So I ordered some Reese's peanut butter eggs and hid those <laughs> around the living room. Oh and they each got a certificate for whatever book they want and fifteen dollars Steam cash. Happy Easter! Happy Easter. They thought it was awesome. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, every year I go, like, all out, make these elaborate freaking things, and you like peanut butter eggs and steam cash. Do you not like my vegan quiche eggs? <laughs> Do you know make killer vegan mini quiches? Vegan mini Okay. I'm going to have to say the whole vegan egg substitute thing because I went to Whole Foods the other day with my daughter taking her to work, and she loves to stop at Whole Foods, and now that she's getting a paycheck, thank you, she's um like buys her own little lunch or whatever, and I'm like, oh, they have breakfast sandwiches on the hot bar. So I end up with tofu and black bean. And I'm like, yeah, it's tofu. It'll taste like scrambled eggs. It's in a wrap, in a burrito or whatever, breakfast burrito. No, I like tofu, but it does not work as an egg substitute. It does. If Whole Foods does not do good tofu. I'm sorry. They do good fried tofu. But when I make tofu scramble, it's really, I mean, it's, it's pretty freaking good. But you have to spice, you have to do the spices right. And yeah. you have to cook the tofu properly, or it's no, not good. They didn't do it right, and they put a lot of weird stuff in it that it shouldn't even have been in that burrito. Yeah, Whole Foods does some stupid stuff to their tofu, and I don't know why. Like, I will not buy prepared tofu from Whole Foods. It doesn't happen. It's gross. But, like, the mini quiche, it's tofu, but um, you bake it, like, in the in a muffin tin, and it's it's got, like... Um, like you saw, you can either saute or just chop up vegetables and then just blend it all together. And you bake them in muffin tins. John loves them. They're super, super good. But he's banned me from cooking when I'm there. 
Because he says I make him fat. You should give him food, eggs, and a jar. Give him what? I don't know, since you like everything in the jar. No, what he, he, Paul, he, what are you eating? Jelly beans. Jelly beans. What do you think? It's the day after Easter. Every Walmart in town has these things on clearance. I I'm not going to buy jelly beans when they're a dollar a bag. Yes, I will. You know what? I was at Walmart today, and I didn't see any Easter clearance. But I went in the grocery side, and I bet you they put it on the entrance down by, like, where it's by the pharmacy. I bet they did that whole entrance. That's usually where they put clearance crap. The last time we were at Costco, they had, like, you know how you go in there and have lunch from all the sample things? Mm -hmm. One of them was jelly beans. And I said, oh, Gavin, I said, you want to get some jelly beans? Meaning go grab one of the little samples, and he comes back with this mega... Costco tub of jelly beans. <laughs> and I was like, alright. Yeah. Okay. I went to Dollar Tree too, just because, you know, they put all the Easter stuff on clearance and I didn't have my daughter this weekend. She's with my ex. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make an Easter basket for her, you know. I'll be ready for her when she comes over tomorrow. And all of the candy was half off, but none of the baskets and the eggs and the, all the little extras, none, none of that was half off. And then I'm like, what the heck? Why isn't it half off? It's easy. And then I'm like, I'm arguing about $2. It's a Dollar Tree. <laughs> it's Dollar Tree stuff. I don't oh, care yeah. if it's 50 cents or a dollar, actually. <laughs> okay. Why would they not have the eggs half off? What do you know. It was weird, though. Like, the candy was all half off, but none of the other accessories or whatever were. I got her like this little jump rope with carrot handles and a Easter basket and you know even the little Easter grass was a dollar. It's like what the hell? But what else are you gonna use that for? I know, right? If like when it does go on sale, um, I know it's a while to hold stuff, but. If you do, you know, make the little gift baskets or if you do bundle items and things, you can rack up. I mean, don't buy your candy, of course. I'm going to say it's not worth the investment because the, it's more the space. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to buy two cases of that stuff just so that next Easter I'd be ahead of the game and I could put some... Ten dollar Amazon Easter or Easter baskets on Amazon or whatever. Yeah, but that's too cheap. <laughs> says the says the guy that has a Christmas tree on his table in March. That's not for sale unless somebody wants to buy it. <laughs> hey, anybody want to try for a Christmas tree? I'll send it to you. Five dollars plus shipping. All year. Unless somebody's gonna pay me for it. <laughs> but dude, if you're doing ten dollar Easter baskets, you should stop. Yeah, that's true, but I don't do Easter baskets at all, so I don't even know how much they should cost. I have not done any of the research. I have no idea what people are willing to pay for an Easter basket. I will admit to having paid close to 50 for a pre-made Easter basket for my kid. All right, hold on. Let me go grab this Easter basket I made for my kid, and you tell me how much you would pay if it was, like, wrapped in a little clear piece of Wait, is that the Easter basket that you're eating the jelly beans from? Right. So there was a lot more that Daddy got you in your basket, but something happened. Oh, look, baby, I'm sorry. The Easter Bunny hates you. Why is my jelly bean basket empty? Nice little happy Easter. It's got the grass, tons oh, of candy. That's cute. What do you think an Easter basket like this would go for? $9. Oh, how much do you have in it? No, what do you what, what do you think it's worth? Well, I was counting how much you got in it from the Dollar Tree. Okay, how much do I have in it from Dollar Tree? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five bucks. Plus grass, ten dollars. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five bucks. Ha! Well, that's not bad. Called it. Oh, there was peeps hidden behind there. But there, yeah, 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 there's a little thing in peeps right here. But no, like some of this stuff, you know, like this, these things, there were like five or six of these in the box, and I only put two of them in here. 
Because I'm going to eat the other ones. You know it. This is my 2 o'clock in the morning special. The peanut butter eggs that I ordered for the kids, I misread the listing and ended up with four bags. But Danica, seriously though, if you were gonna make, if you were gonna go out and buy Easter clearance so you could have a bunch of Easter baskets for next year, and that's the basket you put together, what would you sell that for? What do you think? That one, would, probably yeah. like fourteen, fourteen ninety nine. On FBA. Yeah. So you're out. What that way? That probably weighed a two. It probably goes two pound or eight. So I know. Five dollars for the money, right? Yeah, you gotta go bigger. On there to, I mean, to, for people to even pay attention anymore. That's the thing is, people have put, people ruin things like that. Not. That's why I don't mess with things like that. I let everybody fight their little battles. That's why I don't mess with merch. I feel like merch is the same stuff. It's so, merch is fun though. It's so flooded. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's it costs you time. I mean, I could if I got into merch, I would sit there and spend days. I mean, like so like lately, I've been getting into voodoo and getting building up my voodoo account, and I've gotten into like the Google Plus trade groups and stuff where you can trade codes and buy codes really cheap. And I mean, it's, are you in that one that I sent you a long time ago? Or I think I sent to you. Yeah, yeah, it's the same one. But. I mean, I spend I spend way too much time doing that crap now. It's like, why am I? I've got like 400 movies or something, but why? I've watched them like half of them once, maybe the half that I've watched more than once. 90% of them I've watched twice, and then I've got the 5% that my daughter watches that have been watched 7,000 times. Those were worth it. <laughs> and then I've got one or two that I actually go back to a lot. But, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I try not to fall down those rabbit holes because I feel like I, I don't know. If, if you guys ever gotten that warning from, like, experienced resellers, don't get too in, attached to the things that you love and don't get too involved with the things that you like to do because then you, st you start love, you love doing it so much that you don't even realize you're not even making money doing it. But you try to justify doing it by the fact that you're making some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yup. I mean, you've got to you gotta be careful when it comes to that stuff. I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, Johnny B. That's Johnny, Johnny B. That's our Johnny. That's my Johnny. Uh, I was like, who's that weird person that like, made one comment and then just sat there and never said anything else? He was telling y'all that everything I make is good. And he said, D makes some good tofu. I didn't realize that was him. I was thinking it was somebody else from one of the groups. And I was like, are they talking about me? I mean, how would anybody know what kind of tofu I make? You know, I'm so lost. My brain is so gone today. Duh. <sighs> sugar's vegan, right? Uh-oh. Some sugar's vegan. Not all of it is. <sighs> What do you have to look for in sugar to make sure it's vegan? It's it's how they process it because some of it is processed with bone char. So like Florida crystals and a lot of the stuff from Costco is vegan. Oh. Yeah, we already went over this. The like fact that at least if there's bone char in it, there's some redeeming quality. <laughs> Queen City Picker said that tofu is awesome if you slice it thin and put it on a quarter pounder with cheese. <laughs> and these are my pizza. That's messed up. What are you talking about? Women's pants were half off. Oh. Never mind. I got you. What? What? Has anybody seen Wade? Not lately, no. I haven't seen Wade in like two months, and it's starting to freak me out. I've seen him more recent than that. I haven't, I haven't seen, him, seen him for at least a couple months. It's been forever since I've seen him. Yeah. 
It's been a while. We need to send somebody to find Wade. Because that's kind of freaking me out. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Johnny said you're a swift one, Dusty. What did I do? Oh, yeah, I'm not Robert. What? Who Johnny B was. I haven't talked to either one of you all week. It's been... Like, Me even in our little well. messaging, we've all been so busy. Even our, like, in our little messaging group, I don't think we've talked, like, three times, all three of us, maybe. Yeah, Prophet Talk's been dead. Our chat. Well, that's because I've been down to the count. Okay. Yeah, oh, I've been... I've just been busy. I've been trying really hard to stay away from Facebook and just focus on more of what I need to do. I mean, I don't know, man. I just I want to have 20 grand in the bank. I'm sick of living paycheck to paycheck. You know? Johnny, I, I want 20 grand in my bank. You know, I'm waiting to see what after the delay. I'm waiting to see the comment on that he makes on that one. You know, I I think for me, it's like this time of year, I tend to be a homebody, and now that the weather's nice, I'm like, let's go somewhere, let's do something, mm -hmm. let's go Let's go dig through something so I can sweat off some fat, or, I mean, just get out and do something. Well, that's the other thing, I'm never home either, I mean, I During wake winter, up... I'm home all winter, though. Like, I wake up so early... And by the time 7, 8 o'clock rolls around, I run off. I, I'm taking my daughter to school. I'm taking my girlfriend to work. When I, once I'm downtown already, then I'm out running around all day. You know, uh, like I get home, and when I'm home, I'm trying, like I'll get home in time to ship my packages and get them to the post office to get them scanned in in time to <laughs> keep my top-rated seller. You know, I mean... It's. I feel like I'm just running around all the time, and I'm always freaking busy. Today was the first day that we had semi-decent weather. Like, the sun was shining, and it was 50. Like, this is the first day that it's been nice. That's why I don't live in the Midwest anymore. Dude. I mean, we had two or three days last week that sucked, but for the most part this winter, it's been like 50 to 60 degrees every day in the sun. No, it's been cold. The snow well. doesn't last. We got a blizzard last Wednesday, and there's no snow on the ground now. Our snow is finally all melted. Like, there's a small little section of my upper driveway where, serious? like, the house, the, the house keeps it shaded, and there's, like, tiny, tiny little bits of snow left there. But everywhere else, the snow's all melted. Oh, Thrift, Thrift Daddy just gave me a great idea. Maybe I could squeeze an extra five or ten bucks out of that basket, that Easter basket I made, if I make an ebook on how I came up with that basket. What do you guys think? Just include that with the basket? That's a thing, go. right? Yeah. Or do I have to make like a... So, do you do that or do you make it like a story of Easter ebook to go with the basket? What do you think? The story, like a little Easter story would probably be better, right? I mean, yeah, there's... Make a little, yeah. Watching the film little. might want to know how I came to the conclusion to put that Easter basket together, but normal people, they just want, like, a cute little story to go with their Easter basket. Yep. Yeah. So get on Fiverr. Have or a note, like, putting a note from the Easter bunny. Mm hmm There you go. Does it have to be handwritten? Because I don't think that any kid that read my handwriting would buy that it was from these. Persons. They've got handwriting fonts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And if you merchant fulfill them, you can personalize it. Yeah. Otherwise, just put, hey! Did you see Dusty in the side? Uh, It's a good life. It's a good life. Johnny got my back. Johnny got my back. He do. He's got my guns all cleaned and ready for me to come down. 
I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they're like, "Yeah, whenever well, I'm on a show, like a lot of times I'm checking the local yard sales." I was like, "Damn, that's so rude." When they're on a show? Yeah, I was like, "When you when you don't talk or something, well, that's because usually I'm checking yard sales and mapping yard sales for the next day or whatever." Yeah, I don't think most people take these shows very seriously like we do, because obviously we take these shows very seriously. I mean, we want to provide the most high quality content that we can come up with so that you guys are <laughs> Adam Cotter said Facebook is the biggest money pit out there, takes away time and provides no money. I totally agree, except for the part about providing no money. Um because I've made a lot of good connections like seriously? My wife changed my ringtone. It sounds like an old school phone, so it annoys the crap out of me. Um, I made a lot of good friends through it, but it can be, especially with the bigger Facebook groups and stuff, and that's why I like my little group, that if I have a question, I could go there, and there'd be other people there to help me answer it. And You know, I don't... I used to be in the big Facebook groups, and it's like... I get these requests occasionally, like for somebody to join my group or whatever, and you look, and it shows you a little bit about them, like, been on Facebook this long, what does it tell you? How long they've been on Facebook, how many mutual friends you have, and how many groups they're a member of, and there'll be people that's like, is a member of 678 groups. Like, who the hell does that? Who has time for that? Like, that can't be a real person. Yeah, I can. They just click on every single group and don't pay attention to any of them. I I wonder how many groups I'm a member of. I know I'm a member of a crap ton of groups, but I don't how follow do you find any out of that them. Number? I'm in like five, and two of them are Risa or Wake Up and Profit Talk, and there's not crap that happens in there except on days on their shows. Like I manage five groups. Five. And, huh? You manage five groups? I, I manage five, but I'm in... Really? Possibly. Probably... I mean, that list just keeps going at least 100. I'm probably in at least 100 groups. How do you see quickly how many groups you're in? I'm not seeing anything quickly. I'm just scrolling down, and the more I scroll down, the more the groups keep appearing. Click on groups? <laughs> I mean, my group... You're, I'm in Paul's, like, sell your crap to other resellers group. Reseller wake up. Golden finger picker. Nothing ever happens in there. Profit talk. I mean, Chris Pyle's group, because occasionally he tags us to, when he does shows and stuff. And, and and not a whole lot goes on in there. And it's not that I want to be in groups where nothing goes on. or Like, my group, not a ton goes on in there. But it's like, I don't want to be distracted all day long. You know what my uh, solution to that is? Don't type in Facebook.com into my tool. Well, but I communicate with a lot of people through that. I know. I, know. I mean, that's the thing. I talk to Chad during the day. I talk to Ronnie during the day. I usually talk to the two of you during the day. I talk to Brock during the day. I talk to other people that sometimes have questions, stuff like that. So really, that's the only reason I leave it open. My mistake is when I hit home and it refreshes the page, I'm like, oh, there's something I haven't read. Uh huh. And then you're like 20 posts down, and it's you've watched seven five-minute videos, and you started at eight o'clock, and now it's 11:30. But dude, mine literally. I when I if I friend somebody, I immediately unfollow them. Like none of y'all, I don't I don't follow you. So if I hit home, it shows my group, and that's it. So I don't have that distraction. So if I wanted to be distracted. I'd have to go, you know, something popped up in Golden Finger. Well, I think Golden Finger Picker Group I might follow. No, I don't get notifications on that one either. I got notifications turned off there. Yeah, I leave them on on everything. I'm not, that's probably why Facebook is such a huge distraction to me because my Facebook feed was not strong. I don't even try to fight that stuff off. I just, whatever. Oh, you want to friend me? Okay. Two days later, oh, yeah, there's a Ray Ban ad that you tagged me in. Goodbye. Unfriended. That's pretty much the only way. That and porn. Those, I've, had, I've been tagged on a few that are like, whoa, is that allowed on Facebook? <laughs> hey, Thrift Daddy had a good question. Thrift Daddy, and before, 
before I answer this, Thrift Daddy, first of all, how big is a sweater box? Thrift Daddy asked, would you buy three sweater boxes full of 1960s Barbie outfits and accessories for $40? Yeah, I would. I tried talking about a 30 but yeah, I'd pay 40 I mean, if you're talking about sweater boxes, like your grandma always puts crap in at Christmas, they give you free at the department store to put a shirt in. Is that a sweater box? You know what I'm talking about? It's got a white top and a white bottom, and they're really flimsy. You wrap them in wrapping paper. Does anybody know what a sweater box is? I don't know. And so Matt says Plunder he says he enjoys U the YouTube format for resellers networking, and he follows a lot of shows, but will never mix Facebook and reselling. Facebook is for close friends and family. So that's basically the way that I look at it. I mean, I don't post in Facebook unless it's in a group, really. And if I post something, if you guys see, like, a random post that I make, just, like, okay, oh, hey, every once in a while I might have something stupid that I post, but it's usually jiu-jitsu related, you know, because most of my real-life friends, people that I see and interact with every day, all do jiu-jitsu, and that's kind of, like, my life when I'm not doing this. Like, it's on the other thing that I care about, I guess. Back. But, I mean, I can... I like Facebook because you can keep stuff in the groups and you can keep like your own personal stuff separate. So, Earth Daddy, back to your question. Yes, they are like the ones you put um, put gift gift sweaters in and stuff for Christmas. Assuming the 1960s Barbie clothes, that there were plenty of shoes in there, accessories in there. You said accessories. There was the potential for it wasn't just mis mismatched tops and bottoms. That some of them did have Barbie tags, but they weren't handmade outfits because everybody's grandmother in the 60s liked to make pull out their sewing machine and, and make um, outfits. But if there were some legit ones with Barbie tags, um, some matching tops and bottoms, I would totally, and at three sweater boxes full for 40 bucks, hell yeah, in a heartbeat. Even if there were a few, you know, handmade ones in there were. But back, anyhow, back to the other that Paul was talking about. My Facebook's totally different. Like, there is not one single relative or, I don't want to say real-life friend, because Danica is our real-life friend, because we've met her in person. And I do have a few, but as far as anybody I knew before I joined the reselling social networking community, no, there's none of those people. So my Facebook, my Facebook's the total opposite. Um, well, I can say like, family. I can. I would consider you guys real life friends. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, you. I mean, you are, but you know what I mean. Like people that live locally or that I'm related to. Let's put it right, that way. Exactly. But I mean, that aren't resellers. I do have a lot of friends in the reselling community that I've never even said two words to through comments or through any kind of like messaging or whatever. Because I'll, I'll friend anybody. I don't care. Yeah, I've seen your friend. I last. feel so special now. <laughs> but you know, well, I, mean. I won't sit there and hang outs and talk to people or just anybody. I won't get in a live show with just anybody. But hmm. you know, I'll hit that add friend button as long as you don't tag me in Ray Ban ads. Um, I haven't seen any Ray Ban ads lately. Every once in a while. That's Plunder said, I can't figure out how it would make money to mix Facebook. Some groups, if you're good at, at your time management, you can learn a lot. And then the stuff that I bought and sold off of other resellers I've made money off of. So there is some money there. If you have a niche or if you have your own product, then Facebook can be invaluable for building your brand and building a relationship with your potential clients or your potential buyers you know, the people that you want to sell to. Now, if you spend 20 hours a week on Facebook, the amount of things you could have gotten listed, assuming that you pretty much have an unlimited supply and you aren't going to run out of things to list on eBay or Amazon, the amount of things you could have gotten listed in that 20 hours, no, you're not going to make as much as the crap you could have gotten listed in that same amount of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had, just because of some of the stuff that I talk about, some of the stuff that I'm into that I know about, I've had people find that stuff, and they are overwhelmed when they find it. 
they're just like, whoa. And I'm the, like, I'm the first one they think of because they've heard me talk about it enough. They're like, hey, can you look, what do you think? Can you, do you want to buy this? I mean, I'll give you a good deal. This is what I paid. Double my money, triple my money, whatever. And I'm like, yeah. And that happens every once in a while, but it is not, it doesn't happen enough to warrant all the time spent, you know, I mean, I, well, Paul, like you know that Paul knows that I do DVDs, I'm proof for DVDs on Amazon, he knows that I don't mind dealing with some weird crap, and you flip stuff when you sold me a watch last week, I mean, you flip stuff to me probably four or five times. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, months. I've sold a few things to you. So, and it was stuff where you made some money flipping it. I was willing to sit on it, or actually the watch is, I don't even know where the watch is. I'll probably end up keeping it. It's around here somewhere. I have the exact same watch, and I love it. So, it's, they're, dude, G-Shocks, this is what I, I wear a G-Shock every day. I love this watch. You don't have to do anything. You just keep it in the sun. No, it doesn't. Was that one, was that one solar, too? This one? No, the one you got me, do I have to see Yeah, yours it? is, it's. It's atomic solar. Is that it? Atomic solar? Yeah, it's atomic, so it automatically gets... Dude, uh, it was blank, and I took it out of the box, and it came on. Yeah, that's what it does. They turn off when they're in the dark. They save... Well, you've got to leave them in the dark for an hour or two. Like my wife does to me? <laughs> Leaves me in the dark, never mind. Um, yeah, I might actually end up end up wearing that because I don't have all my watches that I have are like collectors kind, whatever, and I don't have just a bang up bang up kind of that go out particular and watch. watch the re it has all the features of a perfect beater watch, man. Do I look like you now? Mine's metal, but I yeah. But see, I wouldn't want to wear metal. That's too nice for going out picking around and picking in. Well, no, I've got the exact same watch too. I've got the one that you have on your wrist upstairs. I just, I like this one because this is why I like this one. You have to actually like snap that. This one, I mean, it just, it's got the little metal thing. You know, the metal clasp. Right. It's so easy. It's so much faster. Suggested retail price twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, whatever. You Where forgot they, they must Where the one they? must have scratched off or something. Whose price was that? the punch Whose price sticker is that? <laughs> For real. I wondered who where got I'll buy them all day long for twenty four nine. Would you pay thirty dollars twenty nine fifty shipped? No, I think I talked you down. No, yeah. Because you wouldn't budge. Well, I didn't pay good prices, though. I, I I talked them down a little bit, but I made a buck or two. Maybe ten. It couldn't have cost you much to ship it because it came in a cardboard box about yeah, this big. With the like label wrapped around all four sides. <laughs> yeah. Two or three bucks to ship. And to be honest, I had forgotten about it, and I was like, "Why don't I get some of the mail from Paul?" <laughs> Smalls are my favorite, man. Anything that ships first class, I would rather just stick with that all day, just because. They fit in. You know what kind of box and what size of box it'll fit in? It's going to cost you less than five bucks. You can sell. I mean, anything that is worth selling, you're going to get 10 or $20 for. So you're always making money on that stuff. And I don't know. I probably could have sold that watch for like 60 bucks, but I like you. <laughs> uh, it might have been pushed. It's it's probably worth yeah fifty or sixty close. It, well, I'm talking. Ship. Oh, with shipping. But I like you. Plus, you <laughs> didn't have to take any pictures of it. I don't even think you ever showed me a picture. I think you just sent me the model number. No, I took a picture of it. Did you? Yeah, I did. I sent you a picture of it. But the model number is all you need for G-Shocks. That's one of the nice things about them and why I love them and why I always grab them when I see them for a decent price because they, you know exactly what you're getting and the things are freaking bulletproof, man. I had a G-Shock, that exact same watch that I sent you. I found one like six or eight months ago at a garage sale, completely dead. Like the guy sold it to me for a dollar because... He thought it was dead. I took it home and I left it on my desk 
like just as a alarm clock kind of style, you know, just sitting on my desk. And I've got this huge glass door right here, shining light on on it every morning. Well, after like two days, it turned on. And I was like, oh, huh, okay. And that was my first G-Shock. I wore that around for like three or four months before I found this one because I just like the metal clasp a little more. But, yeah. It's really sad that I collect watches and I don't ever even wear one. Unless we're going out to eat, then I'll throw a nice one on. Dude, I, don't I wear one during day to day, whatever. I just don't. I don't know. I went all day without wearing a watch today, and about four o'clock, I finally got home. I'm like, I ran inside to run upstairs and grab a watch because it was driving me crazy. I kept looking down at my wrist, like, shit, I forgot my watch. <laughs> Every five minutes. People are talking in the audience about how much they love first class. Um, you know, my favorite thing about the first class, the new improvements with, you know, with the eBay, eBay shipping where first class now goes up to 15.9 or 16 ounces, I didn't realize how many items I had that fell. The first thing, the first best thing I ever did was went out and finally got me some poly bags for some of the stuff I have that's like padded. Um, so that I didn't have that extra ounce or two of cardboard weight. And so that caused a lot of my items to fall in that 13 to 16. And every time I do one, ship one of those, it's in that 13 to 16 ounce, I can just keep thinking, I just saved like three bucks. Because like 350 to ship it, and if it was going California, you know, California one pound from here is about 650 or six something. That's like three dollars every time I do one of those. Yeah. It is literally... I bet you I bet you I've shipped a hundred items that that new shipping chain just saved me three dollars on. That's three hundred bucks. That more than paid for the thirty five dollar box of of poly mailers. Yeah, the three ounces is a big deal. Makes such a difference. There's a question in the chat. Thrift Earth Daddy asked, "When do you scrap a gold watch versus selling as a working watch?" Um, honestly, if it's gold, which I know he knows what he's talking about when it comes to that stuff, but not if it's not plated or roll gold plated or whatever, if it's truly gold gold and it works, it's going to be a higher quality of watch that's going to be worth a lot more working, if that makes sense. It's going to be a lot worth a lot more than it is to scrap anyhow. Um, so basically they don't make crappy watches in real gold. That's what I'm trying to say. I have a buddy that I haven't talked to. Well, he used to be a buddy, but I've talked to him in a couple of years. We just kind of moved and lost touch, but he lives here in town, and he used to own a pawn shop, and he worked for, went to work for, he and his dad used to own a pawn shop, and, and he went to work for a We Buy Gold kind of place. That's like the number one place in town where everybody picks their gold. I mean, literally a line out the door. It's kind of where the ghetto meets the decent neighborhood by the interstate. And um, they, when he was working for the guy, he now bought the We Buy Gold place because the guy passed away. Um, when he was working for him, they would take the Rolexes and stuff that came in. Well, now not Rolexes, but any of the other higher-end watches. They would take them, and they'd buy them from people. They'd scrap the gold, but he would sell them. He would save the movements, and he would write down what it came out of, et cetera, et cetera. He'd write it down on a little baggie. And he'd sell me the movements for like ten or fifteen dollars a piece, and a lot of those movements I'd get sixty, seventy, eighty bucks. And he'd test them because a lot of them you had to pull the stem out of the movement to get it out of the case. He would test them and all that kind of stuff before he stuck them in the bag and write all that on the bag. But it used to kill me. I was like, why are you taking those apart? But the guy that he worked for that owned the the gold place didn't have any interest in doing eBay. He just wanted to send everything to the gold refinery. Kind of like pawn shops. I mean, they don't, well, pawn shops try to sell one whole, but, yeah. you know, a pawn shop, when they buy your ring, unless it's something special, they're not going to put it in the case. They're going to send it off and scrap it. They're going to pull I was the in a pawn shop one it. day, and this made me, like, think maybe I need to pay more attention. They, uh, he was looking through, like, all the marks on these rings and watches and stuff that the guy brought in, and he pulls out this silver ring, and he's like, what? What does 925 mean? 
<laughs> and this this giant freaking ring, this big around, the thing probably weighed an ounce or more by itself. And he's like, "What's nine two five mean?" <laughs> the guy's like, "No, oh, I don't know. I mean, nine two five. And I was like, "It's platinum." <laughs> And they're like, oh, oh, and then they look it up and they're like, oh wow, you you got a really good one here. <laughs> I was like, really, guys? Jesus, I should definitely pay more attention when I'm in these places. But you know, that's I mean, pawn shops are. You've got to think about the people behind the counter that are bringing all this stuff in. I mean, if you talk to them for two seconds, they might come off as knowing something and they their stuff you know like diamonds those guys know more about diamonds every pawn shop person that I've ever run into knows more about diamonds than I ever will because they see a dozen diamonds a day and you eventually pick that stuff up you know but I mean there's a lot of stuff they have no freaking idea and I'm just like eh, I'll give you a couple bucks for it alright yeah it's fine whatever like <laughs> Have you ever, like one of the things I do when I go into a pawn shop, if you ever uh, look through the DVDs and the video games and stuff, if there's a disc missing, sometimes there's a number there. I'll go and ask them, do you have like a, like a bin of DVDs or video games that have never been, or like, uh, They're they don't have matches. Like the case isn't out there on the thing. If I can't find the case, can I make? Can I just buy the game for cheap since it's just stuck back here? And I'll pull out like fifty dollar games like that, you know, because they'll have the disc only behind the counter and they won't have the case out on the shelf, and they don't know what it is. Right. I do, and it's like I'm pulling out like a, last time I did that I pulled out like thirty games and I got I paid two bucks a pop for them and there was nothing in that stack worth less than fifteen bucks. Nice. And nobody does that, so I mean, it, they add up. But it's not something you can do at every pawn shop every time that you go in there. But you know, once you get to know them after you've got that rapport with them for a while, they'll start to warm up to you, whatever. I mean, one of the first big, big, big pawn shop scores that I ever did, I walked in and they were like, uh, they. I was buying video games all the time, you know, I always wanted to see the video games, so they were like, you know, we've got like 10 boxes of video games in the back that, I mean, they're just back stock, and if you want to give us like $10 a box, then that's cool, and I bring them out, one box was full of nothing but Nintendo games, the first one that I pulled out was like some, like Gargoyle something, it was a $50 game, I'm like, yeah, I'll take this box, <laughs> but I mean... I basically took all the, I cherry picked everything, and then I took all the crap that I didn't want to deal with, that basically stuff that was worth like ten dollars or less on eBay, and took that to a couple of local shops and probably got three or four hundred dollars in credit between all that stuff. I mean, God, that was. I've got a lot of stories like that that once you they, they have so much junk laying around in the back that just they have lost complete track of they look at it every day they have no idea what it is they don't care what it is they just step over it but you have to really get to know those guys before you get back there and start to get to dig around in it I need to lay down yeah it's getting late isn't it We've been rambling. It's almost 8.30. Okay. Sorry. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye. Um, thanks for what... Oh, I turned my camera off again. I was looking green. Um, thanks for watching, guys, as always. Um, wow, my brain is done. Um, we'll see you guys later. Paul may have a show. Dusty may have a show with Brock, who knows. Um, you guys are doing the Grumpy Old Men again, though, right? Or is that just sometimes? That's, That's just super when her cat goes, I haven't had a beer in a week and a half, and I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> gotcha. So watch the reseller wake up. Watch Dusty's Facebook group. See if they've got anything going on later this week. And we will...
catch you oh. guys next time. I am going to have the show with Brock. You are? This week, but I'm not sure when yet. Oh. So watch for that. All right. There are a couple of really quick things that we got to address here. First one, let's see. Uh, okay, do you, is it wrong to buy something from somebody from a, like, is there walking into a pawn shop? Oh. If you think you can get away with buying that thing without the guys in the pawn shop seeing you and remembering your face the next time you walk in there to try to do business with them? They won't do any business with you. But um, if you can catch they turn somebody down, you happen to overhear it, you nonchalantly leave. It's not cool to do business with somebody on a pawn shop's parking lot on their property. That's just kind of one of those yeah, don't those know. rules that'll get you booted really quick. But if they've turned somebody down and I've been known to do this on a really good load of something and the guy gets in his car and I'll just be like, Hey, okay, well, appreciate it, get in my car, maybe follow him down to the next red light, flag him, you know. I don't even do follow. I, I let them like, hey, dude. Like, if they're if they've been turned down by the pawn shop, they're turned down by the pawn shop. It's they're fair game at that point. Don't try and grab them on the way in. Nag them on the way out, and you might get some flack, but nowhere near as much as like trying to grab them before they even get to talk to somebody inside there. Grab them on the way out, uh, and then there's. Um, there was another one, but I don't know. Oh, the G-Shock thing. If it says G-Shock, here. Big ass letters right there on the top. It says G-Shock. I mean, they're... Uh, there you go. They don't knock these off. It's a $100 watch brand new. They're freaking awesome. Cassie has to mark the back face plate, too, the part that where it touches your wrist, where you... Remove the back. They're going to mark that. It's going to model yeah, numbers. Yeah, there's resist. I mean, it's a pretty ornate marking on the back. If you see a G-Shock, then you you can pretty much assume that it's real. But there are a lot of fakes that they're not actually trying to copy it. They're just trying to replicate it. Like, I was in Walmart today or looking through the clearance, and they had a bunch of watches on clearance that looked like a bunch of fake... Like they look the same. They look like the same style as the G-Shocks, but they were not G-Shocks. You can tell the difference. Anyway, don't want to keep Danica up all night because she wants to go to bed. I just don't feel it's not working having. Email. I mean, we've been going for an hour and a half. It's all good. Yeah. Well, we normally only go for an hour too. So. Yeah, I know. Thank you for watching, everybody, and we will see you next week. The boys might see you later this week. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe. Let me Big know. point. Maybe. Right. Good see night, guys. You. Peace.